And right next to the restaurant, here you can see the guy making the pot stickers. They look so delicious. He just keeps turning it around, turning it around. Then he lets it sit there, obviously leave the steam inside. And he opens it, keeps turning it, turning it, turning it until they're done. And they're called pot stickers because they stick to the pot, obviously. <laughs> Good morning everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in Shanghai, China with my boy Lee from Untour Food Tours and this morning we're going to go on like a street food breakfast tour and tell me a little bit more about it. Sure, first we're going to walk through the park and see what local people do in the park in the morning but we're going to go down the street that way and have some uh, uh, four heavenly breakfast king items here in Shanghai already then along the way we're going to stop more, eat more, stop more, eat more and take a break finally, go through the lane houses, see where local people live for for uh, 150 years already okay. and then cool. we're gonna go to the wet market have some uh, hempu noodle we're gonna end the tour with some XLB Xiaolongbao perfect and if you guys don't know about Untour food tours they have some of the best food tours in Shanghai they also have food tours in Beijing and yeah when you come here you definitely have to go on a tour with them it's amazing last night I did one and it was so delicious dude I'm still full <laughs> good for you <laughs> alright let's go eat and so this is Tai Chi. This is the morning exercise. I love it. Everywhere around Shanghai, I've seen people do this in the park. Yeah. We're in the middle of the uh, former French concession. And this is basically the center, the park that we just walked through. That's the Xiaoyang Park that's built in the 1930s, originally for the, uh, the French children in the 1930s, right? So um, here we go, we see lots of uh, different types of buildings around here. Some, some are old, and this one right here, this is basically the Mansion Hotel. This is where the, uh, one of the notorious gangster had was, you know, it was his headquarters over here before. Oh wow. Um, his name is uh, Big Ears Du, Du Yuesen. Uh, the four heavenly breakfast king items here. Those are the very local, local uh, style of the breakfast, but they can be found elsewhere as well. But we're gonna go in here and sit down and try all of them. This is like an old school restaurant. Feels more like a diner, and it's it's like communal sitting. So like if you don't if you don't have seats for like your own table, you obviously sit with other people. And we have our friend next to us eating, right? And here we have four different dishes. So we have soy milk, right? Soy milk. What's that? Again? And this is the uh, uh, savory version of the sticky rice ball with some uh, uh, shredded pork, uh, pork floss, and a little bit of the uh, uh, salted duck egg, and a little bit of the uh, salted vegetable in there as well, pickles basically. And then you have the normal, uh, typical Chinese uh, breakfast. This is the churro, the Chinese churro, but it's called you tao, translated to be oil stick. And the very last one out of it, this is the sweet version of the da bing. It's basically Chinese uh, flatbread. Is a uh, what you can do is basically uh, rip it into different parts and dip into it if you want, and eat it like that. Or you can rip it smaller parts and just throw it in there. Throw it in there and like eating like a, a cereal basically. Voila. Let it absorb. It. Exactly. This is like how I would do churros in Spain, right? But with chocolate. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Has the same taste as the churro in Spain. Yeah. Very similar. This one doesn't have any sugar on top. Usually over there they put sugar. Mmm. Start dropping it in. Very oily. Oh, I love this, man. Mm. But my hands are like full of oil. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna like push it down a little bit. Yeah, this is like a Chinese cereal in a way. Right? Put it up. Let it absorb the soy milk. Alright. I love the cereal. So I'm gonna grab the sticky rice ball. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Oh wow. Lots of different spices in there, nice egg, extremely dense, very sticky. Wow, this is great. Mmm, what spice is that? Pickled vegetable right here. Oh yeah? That you'll be able to see in the wet market as well, if we go in there. I really love this ball. Mmm. Oh, that one's strong. So filling. 
go. There's the uh, purple sticky rice and also the white sticky rice in here as well. So it's two sticky rice. With one, you will last the whole morning to lunch. I ate half of it though. <laughs> now we have still one more, this one. Mmm, crispy biscuit. What's inside, like butter? Or? Um, sugar paste. It's delicious, but I'm gonna hold off for later. I'm gonna finish this. Yeah. Me too. Mmm, delicious milk, delicious. Dude, I think that's it. I mean, I'm done. I don't need to eat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we throw like three more spots. As soon as you exit the restaurant, right here on the left, you can see them frying up the churros. The guy basically he breaks up the dough, he throws it in the fryer, they let it sit there for like two minutes, they take it out. There's more than churros though, there's like also empanadas or uh, chive dumplings. I call it empanadas because that's what we call it down you know, in Miami, but it's basically it's fried dumplings with chives. We also have some other pastries, a lot of fried stuff here. Very filling, very greasy. I love it, man. It's a good way to start a day. Awesome. This is amazing. This is like the best thing ever to see like that, how they roll it and how they put it together. Just incredible. Next, we're going to have some Jabbing. Just in case you wonder what that is, let's find out. The next stop is this small hole in the wall and what they're doing here is they're making like a savory pancake with some red sauce and what is this? So some chili sauce and uh, basically sweet chili sauce and sometimes they put the uh, sweet uh, wheat paste as well as well but this is the sweet chili sauce and uh, this is usually called the thousand layer pancakes but there's only seven layers maybe. Because it's very thick, right? Yeah. It's a very thick pancake. I haven't seen it like this before. This looks like something I've eaten in uh, in Greece where yeah. it's like many layers of dough, ah, you know? Okay. Seven layers. It's a bit hot, eh? Watch out. It's hot? It's hot. Mmm. Nice and crispy on the outside. Mm -hmm. Soft on the inside. Mmm, lots of layers. Wow. Um, I didn't get that much of the sauce though. I got the other one. Get the sauce one. So I pull it on this side, it can pull it from the other side. There you go. Oh wow. It's not hot. It's like a, almost like a Hoyan sauce. Mm -hmm. So good, I love the sauce. The sauce is really rich. Mm. A little a little hot, like a little hot. Mm. Nice amount of layers. It's almost like a very thick pizza, you know? It's getting hot, hitting me. And this area, as you can see, a lot of cool hole in the walls everywhere. Hole in the wall here, they're having soup. Here they have like duck, chicken, and over there they're having like a billion uh, buns and dumplings, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going there next? I knew it, I knew it. It, it looks too good not to go to. <laughs> so this is the, the Bowser that we saw from across the street and they have different flavors, basically uh, divided into two categories, sweet and savory. So sweet is with sometimes uh, with uh, uh, black sesame paste, egg custard, and also red bean paste as well. And then the savory has two different versions, sometimes with pork, Otherwise, you would have the vegetarian option with the shepherd's purse that we tried last night with the green vegetables, st stir fry with the uh, sticky rice cake. And then we also have some dry tofu, sometimes some mushrooms in there as well. So that's the vegetarian savory version. As you can see, they have so many different buns. As you said, you know, sweet and savory. There's a ginormous variety. I think easy, like 20 plus different types. And they're only two each, two yen each. Really affordable, I think it's like 25 cents, 30 cents. There's a huge line right now, so what we're gonna do is later, we're gonna come back, grab it, and then go eat. So this is the jian bing we're gonna get from uh, over here from this lady, and then we're gonna line up and uh, get some jian bing actions taken as well. So very soon you'll be able to see how she make it and how simple it is, but how delicious it can be. This is one of my favorite things ever. I had it yesterday for breakfast. It's a delicious pancake. It's more like a crepe, very thin, right? They put egg, then they put all these different toppings. The best part is the sauces. There's like a spicy sauce, there's a little bit of a sweet sauce. You can also put different things. You, they usually put fried wonton skin, which gives it a nice crunch. Oh, it is so delicious. I can't wait for this one. I brought my appetite for this one. And here we go, my favorite thing to eat in Shanghai for breakfast. Jamming. Jamming it is. Jamming. 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 Yes. Oh my god. Mm. It's a pack of flavors, isn't it? Mm. I love the fried wonton. And the mix between the spice mm. and the sweet. Yep. You know? Mm. Cheers, my man. Cheers. Every time I think about this right now, mm. my mouth is watering, you know? And I love the cilantro in here. Mm -hmm. If you don't like the cilantro, you can ask them not to put it. It's okay. 
And you can also put other things, right? They have chicken, they have like chicken some sausages. Meat. Yeah, they also can put the, the whole churro, the yotel in there as well. In this cold weather, this is a must. Mm. That last bite mm. was a huge mix of the sauces. Mm. Very spicy, at the same time, it's sweet, man. Mm. That's what I love about it. It's so sweet, at the same time, spice and crunchy. Cilantro, though. Sure. And that gives it the best taste. Like, you have to have a cilantro. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge line here, as you can see. This is like breakfast time. Everybody's out here. It's like uh, so many people are buying food right now. Personally, this is my number one. Mm. I think it's gonna be my number one forever. Same here. All right, right next door, we're gonna have some, uh, well, hopefully they still have it because usually they run out. Um, the Sunjian and also Guote. Exactly what they are all about. They also have soup in there, but let's find out what exactly they are. We're having the Chi Chai Huan Basically, it's the shepherd's purse again inside and also with a little bit of a pork. And this is the wonton, but this is called Gan Bang Huan because there is no soup. So it's a dry mixed wonton. It's, there is sauce, but there's no soup as well. First thing you do is pick up the chopsticks, grab a wonton. Oh, it looks incredible. Wow, that soup is delicious. Mm, great mix between the pork and the, uh, what is it called again? What's inside? Uh, shepherd's purse. Shepherd's purse, shepherd's purse. Mm, spring onion outside. Oh, super juicy and delicious. Oh my God, I can eat a few more of these. Guo tie. So they also have soup in there. Guo is pot, tie means to stick. So they're literally called the pot stickers. They also just like the soup uh, dumplings that we had last night. Um, they have soup in there, so it's quite dangerous. So don't bite it. It may burn your tongues, your lips, your temple. Worst case scenario, explode, affect your neighbors. The thing everybody here do is they take a little nibble and then they start sucking the soup out, you know, to get it like, yeah, let it breathe because if not, it's way too hot. Oh, they look so freaking amazing. These pastikers look a little bigger and a little more crispy than the ones I've had in America. Here we go. Crispy bottom is uh, cooked with water as well. You see the soup coming out already? So that's hot. I'll suck it out as well. This one I poke it open so otherwise you can bite a hole as well and then slurp it. They have a little bit of uh, sesame uh, oil in here as well, so it tastes really good. So then you can bite in. I'm so excited to try these pot stickers. Oh, it's like boiling. Yeah. Dip it in here though. Mm, so good. Yeah, I just can't bite into it yet. You gotta wait a sec. Mm. Yeah, that's the only problem is you gotta give it a second. It's way too hot. You don't want to burn your tongue, and then you'll have cat tongue. Basically, the whole time you'll be like this, <laughs> like dying. I'm gonna get some of these chilies, like a tiny bit. Put it right on top. I'm all about chili life. Mmm. Nice ball of pork. Mmm. I love it, man. Love the pot sticker. I like how it's burnt on the bottom too. This one I gotta add some though. Maybe a little more. <laughs> oh. If you like spice, you gotta go all in. These wontons are incredible. So, the very first one you see a little black <clears throat> color on top of it. This is the black sesame. Whereas the other one that you see, there's a yellow top on the side or on the top as well. This is the egg custard. This is how they differentiate all the uh, steam buns. Otherwise, they all look similar. You can't tell on the side, but you can tell from the very top. All right, so what we did is we broke it up into quarters so it's easier to, to eat. So this is the black sesame. Black sesame, I guess. It almost looks like chocolate. It's like a chocolate bun. Mm. Mm. We still have the egg custard, so. Egg custard, look at that. Nice yellow egg custard. That one's super sweet. This one's better than the other one. But the egg custard, is just ridiculously delicious, very sweet. It almost feels like very sugary in a way. But the, in the black sesame, for some reason for me, it tastes almost like chocolate. We're done. We can't eat any more of these because we're getting way too full. Mm -mm. We're going somewhere else? We're going to take a break. We're going we're to take, take a break. A coffee break now. Coffee. I need coffee, dude. I haven't had coffee yet. And right next to the restaurant, here you can see the guy making the pot stickers. They look so delicious. He just keeps turning it around, turning it around. Then he lets it sit there. Obviously, you leave the steam inside. And he opens it, keeps turning it, turning it, turning it until they're done. 
And they're called pot stickers because they stick to the pot, obviously. <laughs> the cafe that we're gonna stop by and grab something uh, to drink and to go. Yeah, I need a coffee right now, guys. Right now, I need to wake up. So this is like a modern coffee shop, as you can see. Very nice, sleek, I love the tables. Wood, right? And the coffee we got, here's a cold brew, but it's cold brew with coconut water. Whoa, that's different. Wow, very tropical. Uh -huh. So it's strong, but then you have like nice coconut, with a little sweetness. Oh wow, no sugar. Good coffee is drank with no sugar. It's a nice break from the food. We need a break, we need a break. We're going into the lane houses and to see where local people live for quite a long while already. And there are some uh, uh, signature uh, architecture style over there and we'll introduce over there, which is called the Sukuman style. And basically it means uh, stone frame gate style. So let's see what uh, people are doing in there. We're here in the uh, lane houses and one of the signature buildings is the Sukuman style, which is right behind us, right over here. So they use uh, real stone to build the, uh, the, uh, the gate uh, the frame sorry and the uh, there's a black gate uh, right over there behind the black gate is a little smaller courtyard so some people call it similar to the hutong style but this has a very significant difference because it's, if you look up there that is the uh, uh, art deco style of the decoration yeah i mean look at this it's a huge frame right here nice stone right wow and it's oh it's like 150 200 years right this and here we have a huge black gate very tough gate can i see through it Nope, can't see inside. Can't go inside. Well, actually, the door's open. <laughs> so here's another example of the Sukuman style. This one on the top has a very different architecture style, uh, decoration style. That's the Greek style. But on the two columns, you will see the Chinese elements on there. On the uh, one side, it says, uh, study well, make your family proud. On the other side, it says, make loads of money, make your family proud. <laughs> I like that, I like that. Now, I love this one. This one's really beautiful. I mean, I would never imagine to see this in the middle of these back lanes. Really cool gates. I mean, this looks like a very wealthy person, right? Probably For sure. Days. So next stop is the hand pool noodles. So basically it's like a spectacle. The guy, basically he's like a, a noodle master. He like flips the noodles in the air. But before we stop there, we're gonna quickly go through a wet market and see a vendor that has lots of vegetables. They wanna show me, you know, well this is part of the tour, but they wanna show you like what a wet market in Shanghai looks like. All right guys, this is the wet market that we talked about. We're gonna check it out, what's, in, what's happening inside. This is the wet market. It's basically an open air supermarket with lots of vendors. In the middle you have lots of vegetables, cauliflower, lettuce, potatoes, uh, tomatoes, so many different things. And then over to the right, to the far ends, you have like poultry, you have pork, you have chicken, right? What else? And just in front of us, behind you guys, that's where the seafood is located. So this is where local people do grocery shopping every single morning. Yeah, and the reason they call it wet market is because usually they wet the items and the floor is wet as well. This is pretty pretty dry. This is a pretty clean this one. This is a dry market. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Let's go. Let's go see the noodles. All right, let's I'm go. I'm excited. That's what I'm most excited about, man. The guy with the noodles in the air. Really cool. Let's go. Let's go. Market was pretty incredible. My favorite part of the market was definitely the seafood aspect. Mm. I mean, the guy is there with all the fresh seafood. The fish are like jumping in the air. That's how fresh it is. I mean, it literally came from either the ocean or one of the water towns nearby. You know, river fish, those saltwater and freshwater fish. And uh, let's go see these noodles, man. I love this area. French concession. Sorry, I've never heard that like concession as a neighborhood. Mm. I guess that's something here. French concession. Maybe, maybe in France they talk about that. Well, this is still back in the days in the 1840s uh, when we had the uh, first opium war. That with the French later on that we signed a deal with them. That's the treaty. They signed with uh, several foreign countries so assigned a different area um, for them to, to live, to reside. Alright guys, so we're walking uh, closer to where we're gonna have the Hampo Noodle place. Uh, it's basically also by the Lee family but I'm not related. Uh, they're from the Penang province. They make noodles here. This is a family business. They actually open 24-7. The only time they get off uh, work is actually Chinese New Year. So they'll be gone. They will not be operating here. What he's doing right now, he's basically prepping the dough, um, warm it up, and you see him flipping it several times and swirl it as well, which is uh, to align the gluten and see if it's uh, uh, flexible enough and he's prepping it. But the actual making noodle part of it is only taking seven seconds. 
So here we have the noodles. Look at this, guys. Just pull it up. Whoa, nice sauce in here. And what you do is you just start slurping. Mmm, it's like a sticky sauce. Not spicy. Actually, it doesn't have too much flavor, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get some of this. Put on top. Ooh, that's some chili sauce right there. Mmm. Change the game, bro. The chili sauce, it's not too spicy. Nice, very pungent. Oh my god, but these noodles are incredible. If I wasn't so full, I would destroy this. But I'm just gonna have like one or two more bites. Wow, they're super thin noodles, very sticky sauce. <laughs> oh my god, that one's way too spicy. <laughs> It's not so spicy, I just had a lot of chili, so like it went down the wrong pipe. These are some of the best noodles I've ever had in my life. For real. They're so good. Mm. This is called uh, tofu bamboo stir fry with a little bit of green pepper and uh, uh, red onions as well. But this thing, the yellow thing, is neither tofu nor bamboo uh, because it's actually not coagulated. This is the skin of the soya milk. I filled up a little too much of the noodles, <laughs> but it's okay. I'm gonna try the skin of the soy milk. Amazing. It does have a texture similar to bamboo. The bamboo shoot. It's like a super basic sauce, almost like an oil. I don't know if it is oil, but it's almost like an oil taste. Uh, onions, green peppers. Yep. Pretty good. Good pairing. And the last thing we're gonna try on this food tour is shalambao. XLB. XLB, which is soup dumplings. Gotta be careful, they'll burn your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> now we're walking into the, ooh. We're walking into the, uh, the soup dumpling place and uh, we're gonna try some of that. This is a, uh, a different taste with a hint of the ginger in there now. So this place has shalambao, but they have ginger inside. A little different and it also comes with eight. So we poured some of the black rice vinegar right here. So I'm gonna grab one of these, right? Shalambao, woo! So you put it in and you have to like... Oi, you gotta like open a hole. Well, the hole is there. <laughs> Sorry, I like messed up here. So you should never like poke a hole. You always gotta open a hole. Mmm. Mmm. A little different with the ginger. Ginger with the vinegar. Oh, very nice. Very hot, the soup. Mmm. Very soft. Freaking delicious, dude. But I don't know how many more I have. Maybe one more. One more. They're like very similar to pot stickers. Very similar. But at the same time, the inside's very different. They have, you know, they're not as cooked on the outside. They're very soft. Just put it in there, right? The best thing to do is open a little hole. Mm. Suck the soup out. Wow, what an epic breakfast food tour, Lee. Thank you so much. Untour Food Tours has the best breakfast food tour in Shanghai for sure. This was so amazing. Lots of hidden gems. I didn't even know this area existed. I mean, obviously the French concession, but this is so different. Lots of delicious things. My favorite thing has to be the damn pancake, man. The pancake. Mm -hmm. So good. So rich in flavor. Sweet. Spicy. And I really love the shalambaos. Really good. I think the noodles, the last thing we had before this, that was probably my favorite noodles of all time. Super fresh, yeah. nice flavor, not spicy at all. I had to add some spice there. And yeah, man, epic, epic. How about you? What was your favorite? Well, my favorite is to the uh, the pancake, actually, the jambi. The jambi. The jambi. The jambi. Yes. Yeah, the jambi. All time favorite. That's the best. Well, guys, next time you come to Shanghai, definitely look up Untour Food Tours. They have many different food tours around the city. This one in specific is called the Breakfast Street. Street Eat Breakfast. Street Eat Breakfast. Really delicious. Like, wow. I was blown away. Oh, and the pot stickers, dude. The pot stickers are so good, too. There's just too many things. Too many things. And yeah, guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. And subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Shanghai, China. Peace.